Today we meet the team behind Hermes spacecraft. You know, a lot of people have wanted to enter the space tourism market, and just lately in the past uh, decade or even just a few years, uh, the material sciences and technology has finally caught up to those kinds of dreams. We'll learn how they plan to make space travel affordable for the everyday person. Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Hello, hi there. Hi. So the first thing that I'd, I'd really like to ask you is how you came up with the idea to create space travel being affordable for everybody. I think we all three came from kind of different backgrounds. I, I grew up with the Apollo missions and the moon landings and Skylab and Apollo Soyuz. I just grew up thinking that was the way it was going to be. And as I got older and it wasn't happening, somewhere along the line, I decided to take it into our own hands and do it ourselves. I know that Mark grew up around the Cape and he saw some shuttle launches. And Chris, I think you guys turned on with uh, Station One and watching that yeah. part, right? Yeah. So we kind of came from three different realms, and uh, I, very early age, was drawing sketches of spacecraft back in grade school, high school. Went off and got an aerospace degree to do it. Uh, these guys were actually working in parallel on kind of a similar deal, and uh, a few months back, we actually combined our efforts and became one. Well, that's great that you took your childhood passions and kind of combined them into this project. Can you tell us a little, about, uh, a little bit about the Hermes spacecraft? Sure. The, the Hermes is a prototype that we've constructed to do some basic testing, uh, proof of concept, to be able to get some uh, visibility out to the crowds, you know, things like that. Uh, it's a prototype for us. It's, it's designed to do some pretty basic things, some basic testings, and uh, it's never meant to go into space. We'll build the next one that's space-worthy. Well, can you, can you tell us how you plan to make that affordable for everybody? Well, probably the biggest way is uh, we're not research and develop. Everything out there that we need is on the shelf somewhere because, I mean, space, manned space flight is over 50 years old now, right? So, so basically, we buy everything ready to go, ready to go, and we end up with a big systems integration exercise as opposed to uh, reinventing the wheel. As you can see, we uh, use the space shuttle aerodynamics pretty rampantly. Uh, a lot of good information there, a lot of data. No one, don't want to throw that away. Probably the only thing close to research and development that we're doing is we chose to bring our engine uh, construction in-house. Now, what, what is the cost going to be to take a trip out into space? So the latest, the business plan we have now, the latest numbers show that the, uh, the rocket version uh, will dial in initially at about 150000 per seat, and the balloon launch version will dial in, uh, I think it was like 70000 75000 can you tell us a little bit what the experience is going to be like for people going out into space? Sure. The, the rocket version is very much the astronaut experience. It's the same flight profile the early Mac, the early Mercury astronauts flew. Uh, you, you arc out at about you know, 65 miles altitude. You get, uh, you know, depending on the flight profile, you know, four or five minutes of zero gravity, then we uh, glide back and make a, a wing landing as opposed to a splashdown. Okay. Uh, by today's standards, though, I mean, we're going to pull three, three and a half Gs, which really isn't even a good roller coaster if you get down to it. But, I mean, you take the Mercury astronauts, I mean, those guys, they basically put a capsule on top of an old missile. They pulled anywhere from nine to 11 Gs left leaving, so that took some serious training. We're trying to back that off so your average person can go if they really want to. Now, the other version is the balloon version, which started out as a, a culmination of our test flights. And we were going to tow the Hermes up to the very edge of space, 110,000 feet or so, and run it through all the spaces and then drop it and glide back as, as our last final dress rehearsal before actually launching. But the more we looked at that, you're in 3% atmosphere. You can see the stars, the, you know, the, the curvature of the Earth. And, and it looked like, wow, that, that's a pretty good ride. And a lot of people might do that because uh, a lot of people may not have the health or the desire to climb into a rocket. But we would do the balloon ride because it's a lot slower. Okay, how many people can you take up at once? Is there a crew that goes up with the people, or how does that work? So the rocket version holds uh, pilot, co-pilot, four seats, and the balloon version holds pilot, co-pilot, six seats. Now, I have to assume that there's a lot of regulatory issues that you've had to overcome in the field of space travel. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There are some daunting regulations, uh, uh, FAA slash ASD is who we have to go through. We, have, uh, we do have legal counsel involved looking at that and what we need to do to overcome that. Fortunately, the FAA looks like they're, they're not, they're, they're actually kind of encouraging this because they're, they're giving us a little more lax regulations for a while for the uh, suborbital space tourism market. 
It seems like uh, mostly they're worried about uh, people suing everybody else, and so everybody signs their waiver. It's kind of like more like skydiving. Okay, so how how safe is that? You mentioned skydiving. Is it in the same category as that? Well, kind of. I mean, you're skydiving. You're jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, right? So <laughs> it, there's an inherent risk there, although they, they minimize it by various you know backup shoots, things like that. Uh, we do the same thing. Uh, we wear spacesuits the entire flight just because they're pressurized and that's your main source of oxygen. I mean, just for safety, redundancy, we do pressurize the inner cockpit, the inner the inner vessel for redundancy there. The spacecraft itself has ballistic parachutes on board so that if you do screw up somehow, solid or something, it does have a parachute to set it down safely. Of course, also, uh, we're going to be running the entire flight profile, the entire set of tests. Uh, on the craft. We're going to be doing several test flights beforehand, a very robust and rigorous testing program. So before any single passenger goes up in space, I think we've all agreed that uh, after the test program is done, uh, we're going to be one of the first groups of people to go up. Okay. Do you, do you maybe see any offshoot you know, business opportunities coming from this brand new industry? Yes, uh, most definitely. And anytime you uh, innovate uh, an industry and you're and you're trying to do something big, there's there's several new technologies that can stem from that. And uh, for instance, you know we we mentioned space tourism a lot, but also just on our platform, there's also the opportunity to host uh, payloads, uh, scientific and academic payloads. Uh, NASA and the uh, U.S. government really wants to help subsidize uh, that kind of research as well. I do just have one last question. When can we book our flights? When do you think people are going to be able to do this? So one of my favorite responses to that is, uh, I'm an old hot rodder by heart, and I used to frequent a hot rod shop that had a big sign on the wall that says, speed's a question of money, how fast do you want to go? That's pretty much where we're at. I mean, if we had full funding of our business model, uh, depending on what the investor wants to sign up for, that's between 8 and $10 million. But if we had full funding, we could be to our first test launches inside of two years. Uh, we get a lot of questions about how people can support us, and uh, we always refer to them to our main website, which is fermispace.com, and then people can actually support us either with uh, financial means or, or uh, technical means. We're always looking for uh, more advice and support from people. Well, that's great. Thanks so much for taking the time to tell us about this project today, and uh, best of luck with it. Okay, you bet. Thank you. Thank you. For more information on Hermes Spacecraft and other companies that we'll be featuring, go to our website at cadella.com.